Xin chào tất cả các bạn Các bạn ơi, các bạn có bao giờ thắc mắc cuộc sống của một chú mèo hoang là như thế nào hay không? Hôm nay chúng ta sẽ cùng nhau đọc một cuốn sách có tên là Beno and the Night of Broken Glass Để hiểu hơn về cuộc sống của chú mèo hoang tên là Beno Trong câu chuyện này cùng với những gì xảy ra xung quanh cuộc sống của chú nhé Nào, chúng ta cùng bắt đầu thôi Benno the cat lived at number 5 Rosenstrasse in Bergman, just a few blocks from the new synagogue. He had a nice warm bed near the furnace, where Hans, the housemaster, left him fresh milk every night. On Friday nights, Benno visited the Adler family in apartment 3B. He watched Mrs. Adler light Sabbat candles. Mr. Adler sliced a braided loaf of bread, and Sophie sing from a book she held close. After dinner, Sophie fed him scraps of chicken. On Sundays after church, Benno visited the smith across the hall in apartment 3A for the family lunch. Before Mrs. Smith cleared the dishes for dessert, Inch sneaked bits of snizzle to him under the table. On weekday mornings, Benno watched her Adler and her smith leave for work. He waited as Inch came out of her apartment and knocked on Sophie's door. Benno purred when the girls knelt to wish him guten Morgen. Then he followed them to school. During the day, Benno strolled around the neighborhood. Sometimes, Mosh the butcher fed him scraps and frog Gerber, the grocer's wife, scratched his ears. Often, he took naps nestled among the bowls of fabric in the sunny window of Mrs. Stein's dress shop. In the late afternoons, Benno followed Inch and Sophie to the playground. He sat high in a tree as they played on the swings or dashed about in a game of tag with their friends. Benno was welcomed by all, even into apartment 2G, where Professor Goldfarb was too busy with his studies to pay attention when the cat curled up on his desk. At night, Benno returned to his bed beside the furnace in the basement of number no. 5 Rosenstrasse. He drank his milk and fell asleep listening to the comforting sounds of the people above. Then, things began to change. Mosh the butcher had no scraps for Benno. Fro Gerber, the grocer's wife, had no time to scratch his ears. And Missy yelled, Scratch! when Benno tried to nap in the window. One night, men in browsers lit a bonfire on Rosenstrasse as they threw books and papers onto the fire. The crowds cheered. Benno fled and tried to hide inside apartment 2G. But Professor Goldfarb shooed him away. I must save the books, the professor muttered. And a few days later, Benno watched Inch leave for school without knocking on Sophie's door. He waited a long time before Sophie came out and walked to school alone. Neither girl wished him guten Morgen. After school, Benno watched Inch 
with her friends at the playground. Sophie hurried past the park, her head low. Later, when Benno went home, he found the door to apartment three B locked. Rosen's dress was still a busy street, but the people were no longer friendly. The men in brown shirts strutted about with their heads held high. Benno walked carefully, dodging their heavy black boots. The neighbors and shopkeepers went quietly about their business, their eyes lowered. Then came a night like no other. The air filled with screams and shouts, sounds of shattering and splintering glass, and the bitter smell of smoke. Benno cowered in a doorway. He watched the brown-shirted men swarm over the neighborhood, smashing windows and looting shops. At Moshe's butcher shop. They overturned the refrigerators, leaving meat to spoil on the ground. At Missy's stand's shop, they ripped the bolts of fabric and threw the sewing machines into the street. Benno saw the beautiful new synagogue set ablaze. The Torah scrolls were dragged into the street and trampled. Her jewelry's grocery remained. Untouched. Back at Number Five Rosenstrass, Benno saw the housemaster let the brushers into the building and direct them to certain apartments. They broke into Professor Goldfarb's apartment and tore his books and papers from the shelves. I must save the books, the professor cried. As he was dragged away, Benno ran upstairs. In apartment three B, the mob was breaking the Adler's furniture and throwing books out the window. Even the ones Sophie sang from every Friday night. The smashed apartment was untouched. The next morning, Benno saw her smashed. Leave for work, then inch left for school. He waited for Sophie, but the Atlas door remained closed. Outside, smoldering fires stung Benno's eyes. His paws were cut and sore from the broken glass that littered the streets. Smoke from the gilded dome. Of the new synagogue, rose into the morning sky. Mrs. Stein was sweeping up the glass in front of her store. Her jeweler's grocery was open for business as usual. Benno could not find Mosh the butcher. He never saw Professor Goldfarb or Sophie and her family again. Benno continued to sleep in his bed by the furnace. Hans continued to give him fresh milk, and Frau Jobber scratched his ears. Benno still watched her smashed leave for work. He still followed Inch to school, but life on Rosenstrass would never be the same. Cảm ơn các bạn đã theo dõi câu chuyện lần này. Hẹn gặp lại các bạn lần sau. Chào tạm biệt. Cảm ơn các bạn đã lắng nghe. Mong rằng các bạn cảm thấy thú vị khi đọc cuốn sách này cùng tụi mình. Cuốn sách nói với The Long Book này được thực hiện bởi Lotus Community là một dự án thư viện phí lợi nhuận. Lotus Community mong muốn những cuốn sách tiếng Anh chất lượng tốt có thể tới tay mọi gia đình khắp đất nước Việt Nam. Để tìm hiểu thêm về dự án, các bạn vui lòng ghé qua lotuscommunity.org.vn nhé.